وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم علمنا ونفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما um, A continuation of the uh, story of um, Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the oldest uh, of his children according to some and definitely the oldest from the sisters um, she was married as we mentioned last night to Abu al-As um, her cousin uh, from her mother's side her aunt's daughter um, 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 the husband Abu al-As um, he didn't accept Islam as we mentioned and for many years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu he was part of the expedition uh, on the uh, the Kuffar in the battle uh, expedition of Badr and we, the story of that we mentioned um, we're gonna reverse back a little bit to the Hijrah of Zainab radiallahu anha because there's a very interesting and, and heart-touching uh, emotional story behind that um, Abu al-As, he really loved Zainab anha immensely and the Prophet وسلم, also advised her um, to be loyal and um, be uh, good to your husband. Um, the only thing that he said to her, and it will come up later on as well, um, that you are not permissible for him as he is not a Muslim. So from here we understand uh, that if there is a Muslim girl, cannot marry a non-Muslim man. Um, that's the way how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom behind that. Uh, but first and foremost, all of these questions, whenever they come up, why? Um, the only place that is permissible, and the Quran explicitly talks about that in, in two different verses. Uh, one in Surah Baqarah, وَلَا تُنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى مِنْ وَلَا تُنْكِحُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى مِنْ those, those two verses. And the verses in Surah Mumtahina. Ya ayyuhan nabi idha ja'aka al-mu'minat muhajaratin fantahinun. And then the verse goes down. So the three ayat to talk about that as well. Um, so it's not a time to talk about that. But um, the Prophet wasallam said to her, he did not say that your marriage is broken. Uh, you are still married, but you're not permissible for one another. Um, however, uh, he never gave up on her. He always was also loyal to her, to her as well. And um, the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina. And as we heard in, after, the, after the battle of Badr when it happened, and he was freed without ransom because the Prophet ﷺ did not want to take that necklace of her mother and return back uh, with him to Zainab. And when he came back, he felt... Um, um, a payback, uh, something uh, um, that he has to do for her uh, as she is not with her father and not with the rest of the people who migrated to Medina um, he was very keen to find a way that she can also do hijrah and as we know that the climate at that time it was very difficult for each and every Muslim to leave Mecca it was a big task, it was life and death um, and now this is a female a woman who belongs to the tribe of Banu Hashim right there are many leaders who are still not Muslim some of them never became Muslim and they were always on the lookout for who is planning they will even notice that someone is planning um, so Zainab uh, was told uh, by Abu al her husband that I want you to go to, Ma to Medina and be with your father and with the rest of your siblings. And he arranged um, one of his servants to take her on a camel and he instructed this person that you're gonna protect her with your life. And as he left, he took the camel in, a, in the nighttime, people were on the lookout and they were tracking and they noticed that someone is going on the hodaj on the camel and there's someone in there, and there's a person taking it, so very suspicious. Um, so they went after uh, the camel, and went after uh, both of them. 
and they found him and they started to fight. Uh, this person was a very good archer. He, he fought, uh, but eventually uh, Abu Sufyan came and he said, look, I'm the leader and this is our folk that is leaving Mecca and we cannot allow that to happen. Although they have a big fight, but he is from one of our people and we are not allowing them to leave. Um, so he said that, look, I'm going to protect her. I'm not going to do any harm. I'm going to just send her back to her home, um, to, uh, to the rest of the clan. And then he, um, he said, okay, I give up. And then when he came back, he said to Abu al-As that I'm so sorry that I couldn't fulfill my promise. Uh, because Abu Sufyan, he's the leader and he gave his word that he will protect her, not harm her in, in, in any way. Um, however, uh, uh, story short, that didn't happen. And then later on, um, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Zayd ibn al-Haditha one day that how about um, you go and you bring my daughter Zainab. So he went uh, to, to Mecca. And he is like from the household of the Prophet So he's one of like the household and so close to the rest of the siblings. And that, therefore the Prophet trusted him uh, to bring Zainab uh, to Medina. So when he went there, again they were suspect, suspecting that she's going to leave again. Um, they found out again. And they went after her. And at this time they attacked. And from the attacker it was a person by... Habbar ibn al-Aswad. Habbar ibn al-Aswad, he was from the same clan, uh, but from Banu Umayyah, not from Banu Hashim. And he fought, and he took a spear and injured the camel. And when he injured the camel, the camel fell, and Zainab radiallahu anha, she fell at the same time. And at that time, she was pregnant. And as she fell, she got injured and lost the baby. And some, some of the uh, historians say that actually she was also pierced with the, with, with the spear and she, she lost her baby with that situation. And later on, uh, in the 8th of Hijrah, that wound actually came back and she died of that same injury, uh, as some of the scholars mentioned. Um, but it's interesting to also mention about Habbar ibn al-Aswad. He was uh, a great enemy of Islam at that time, and he will talk a lot. He, would go, he was a, an influential person, and he will go to different tribes and different clans and different um, people and dignified people, uh, dignitaries. He will go to them and talk about the Muslims. He will badmouth the Prophet Wasallam, And he would also, at times, he will also say poetry uh, uh, saying bad things about the Prophet Sallallahu So he harmed the Prophet Sallallahu not just physically that he hurt his daughter, but also caused a lot of harm to the Muslims and he was a great uh, enemy, uh, showing his animosity at every opportunity. Um, at the, after Fath Makkah, um, the Prophet Sallallahu he counted uh, almost 19 names and from one of them was Habbar al Aswad. And he said, um, if you find him, take him and tie him on, 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 on two woods and burn him with fire. I think the Prophet was so angry at him that he just couldn't tolerate him of the pain and, and, the, uh, and the harm that he caused. And then as he was sent then he called it back. He said, I retract. Only Allah, the creator of the fire, can punish someone with fire. Now, in that context, you can see all the wars that are happening. What happens? There's a lot of fire that goes on, right? The bombs they eventually become fire. So la illa rabbuna. And then he said, "But if you find him, take his life." You know, that's the least. Um, however, he was able to escape, and he took a caravan, was going to sh to, to to Sham, and he joined them. And then he came back. He came back and he came to the Prophet Sallallahu And then when he, as soon as he entered, I just want to uh, go with the words that he said. Um, when he came and he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and people said, Habbar is here. The person that we were looking for, he's right here. And the people, they rushed 
they were planning to like attack him at that moment, the Prophet said, hold on, wait for him. He came, he came to us, let us listen to him. Um, he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inni ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna ka Rasulullah. I bear witness there is no God but Allah and I bear witness that you are the Prophet of Allah. وَلَقَدْ هَرَبْتُ مِنْكَ فِي الْبِلَادِ I ran to the other places in the earth. So he's telling that he had an opportunity, he had a chance uh, to survive. وَأَرَبْتُ الْلُحُقَ بِالْأَعَادِمِ And I intended to go and be with uh, the non-Arab kingdoms because I had my connections. ثُمَّ ذَكَرْتُ وَعَائِذَتَكَ وَفَضْلَكَ وَبِرَّكَ وَصَفْحَكَ عَمَّنْ جَهِلَ and as I was planning that, I thought about your generosity, your mercy, your forgiveness for those who wrong you. He was a very eloquent person. He knew how to present his case. Uh, but look with so much humility. He said, uh, Ya Rasulullah, we were people of idolatry. Then Allah guided us by you. وَتُنْقِذَنَا بِهِ مِنَ الْمَعْلَكَ and, and you will protect us from going astray or going into a um, uh, thing that will cause us uh, 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 trials. فَصْفَحْ عَنْ جَهْلِ وَعَمَّا كَانَ يَبْلُغُكَ مِنِّي So, O oh Prophet of Allah, Forgive or, or pardon my ignorance and whatever I have caused you. فَإِنِّي مُقِرٌ The last part. It's very important. Whenever we make tawbah to Allah, this is how you make tawbah to Allah. وَإِنِّي مُقِرٌ بِسَوْأَتِي مُعْتَرِفٌ بِذَنْبِي And I acknowledge all of my wrong that I've done to you and the, and the sins that I've committed. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ بِكَ حَيْثُ هَدَاكَ لِلْإِسْلَامِ And Allah has also done good to you that He has guided you to Islam. وَالْإِسْلَامُ يَجُبُّ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ And Islam erases everything that precedes your coming to Islam. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not take any revenge. He did not say, Oh, but what about I can forgive everything, but you killed my, my grandson or daughter, and you almost killed my own daughter. What about that? The Prophet ﷺ was tested in each and every way, in every aspect, even with his own family. And um, the Prophet ﷺ forgave him. And mashallah, he became a great uh, companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Like many others, many of the people of Banu Hashim, in particular, or Quraysh in general, uh, a lot of them accepted Islam way later on, like Abu Sufyan. Um, so back to the story um, quickly. Abu Al-As, um, at the time of Fatih Makkah, around the same time, he was also traveling to Sham, and he uh, had the wealth of the people of Mecca. He was trading. So... Uh, a Sariya, um, an expedition the Prophet ﷺ sent out uh, with about uh, a few Sahaba, they caught him and they caught his caravan and they took all of his wealth and they took him to the Prophet ﷺ. So it was the night time when they got to Medina and he knew that his wife was there. So he slipped away and got to Zainab and he said to Zainab, look, I came to seek your protection. And, you know, they had that connection, that love and that affection. Um, she said, wait. She waited for the Prophet ﷺ to go and start the prayer. It's very interesting. The Prophet ﷺ, that Allah loved that and all the Muslims started the prayer to make sure that there's no confusion and nothing, you know, pops up because nobody's going to move in the prayer. She comes out and says, I have given safety to uh, Abu al-As. Now, in the tradition, there is a man, if a person gives a man to someone, that's a protection that he gave his word. And in the uh, pre-Islam, it was also a big thing. Someone said, I gave my protection, that's it. This person gave his protection, so no question asked. 
So the Prophet ﷺ, after he finished his prayer, he says, you heard, you heard what she said, and he said that the, the least among you is asking protection. The Sahaba said, of course, whatever you decide, he has protection. Your daughter gave protection, it's our protection. Okay. Now the Prophet ﷺ went, uh, he also knows that, okay, he protected his life, but what about the wealth that he's carrying? So he goes to those people who brought the Abu al-As and, and his wealth. He said, look, whatever you did, it was right. You took the wealth, it's yours. It's the fight, and you get your portion in it. Or you could give it back to him because it doesn't belong to him. He, it belongs to the people of Mecca. And he has to give them back their, their, their money and whatever, whatever uh, um, access to whatever he had, it's his. Um, so they say, Rasulullah, whatever you decide, we give all the wealth back. It's better for us. Whatever it makes you happy, take it. The Prophet ﷺ gave it to Abu al-As. Abu al-As took that money and went left. He goes back to Mecca, calls all the people that he owes them. This is your wealth, this is yours, this is this. Gives them all the things back and he says, Did I give you all of your money back? Say, yeah, you gave all of every, anything that I owe you, did I give it back? Do I owe you anything? No. How do you find me as a, as a man of business, a businessman? I said, Whoa, we, we, we know that you are so honest and you brought it back. He said that I bear witness there's one God named Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his messenger. Um, I wanted to make sure that I give back your wealth. Actually, what happened uh, before he even left, uh, uh, the, the Muslims, they said to Abu al look, why don't you accept Islam? And then you can have the wealth, it's yours. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to start my Islam this way by taking other people's wealth. If I owe them, I'm going to give it back to them. So he gives it back and he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, I already knew the truth and I wanted to accept Islam when I came to Medina, but I had this wealth and I wanted to return it back to them, so that's why I returned it and I came back. However, um, that was the story of Abu al-As, and he, after accepting Islam, um, uh, Zainab radiallahu anha had only two children, uh, Umama and Ali. Ali radiallahu anhu died as a very little child, did not survive. Uh, Umama, however, lived after her mother passed away. Um, she was married to um, Ali, I guess. Is it Ali? Um, or was someone else? Anyway, they had another child. Uh, they had an, uh, uh, she had a child, but they didn't survive. And she also died. Um, and so none of the children of Zainab radiallahu anhu, anha actually uh, survived um, and uh, it ended over there by the, the last person who died, Umama radiallahu anha. So that's the story of Abu al-As and Zainab radiallahu anhuma. The Prophet ﷺ loved Umama, just like he loved Hassan and Hussein, his grandchildren. Uh, he loved Umama. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ will carry her on, her on her shoulder. Once the Prophet ﷺ came and he had a necklace, a beautiful necklace that one of the, um, the, the, the king of, of Yemen sent this necklace to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, I'm going to give this necklace to the most beloved one to me. So the other wife said, it's going to be Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr. Um, the Prophet said, to her, Where is Zainab's daughter, Umama, my daughter? And the Prophet said, And she came in running, and her eyes were like, she was uh, um, dirty. The Prophet said, wiped her face and put the necklace on her neck. The Prophet said, loved her a lot. <laughs>